This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today I want to answer the question, should Vitalik Buterin join Bitcoin Core? But first, some necessary context. Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, is a boy of many, many talents. For example, he's the proud father of some of the cutest kittens that you've ever seen, and he truly takes pride in that. He's also an ex excellent singer. Hey, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up, Bitcoinerk? <laughs> His high range there is quite incredible, and he's a good dancer as well, as we'll see in this video. He's got a number of moves, not just the badger move, but he can also do the snake move, which is pretty rare. You're about to see it right here. There we go. Now he's doing the snake or whatever that thing is. So these multifarious talents make it that much more shame that Vitalik was driven away from Bitcoin by some really mean Bitcoiners. These Bitcoiners had the bizarre idea that Bitcoin was a monetary network that should be used by people to send Bitcoin to each other. Vitalik, on the other hand, was more like, there's no such thing as spam as long as you pay the transaction fee. If that sounds familiar, here's the background. We have to go back to 2014 and the counterparty protocol, which was designed to allow the issuance and trading of scammy tokens on Bitcoin by spamming the Bitcoin blockchain. And Luke Dasher didn't like the spam and was filtering it out from his mining pool and from his mempool using Bitcoin knots, as we read in this article from BitMEX. Luke's mining pool at the time also started filtering out counterparty related transactions. At this point, fear and uncertainty started to build in the counterparty community. They needed op return to be 80 bytes or they, or they would be forced to keep using the op check multisig op code. It did not seem likely that it would go up, that op return would go up to 80 bytes given Luke's comments. In addition to this, some feared the developers could even reduce the limit even further, potentially booting counterparty off the network. For example, if they moved up or turned down to 40 bytes, the Bitcoin developers, and this is important, the Bitcoin develop, developers did not seem especially friendly to the counterparty, and therefore some may have felt that it was likely to be difficult to continue to use the Bitcoin protocol. On the 25th of March, 2014, Vitalik Buterin, the main founder of Ethereum, chimed in. He argued that the debate should be more around fees, and if you pay enough fees, then your transaction should be legitimately included. That should sound very familiar today. Uh, today, Ethereum's fee algorithm, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here is uh, Vitalik's phrase: "Is uh, what he wrote. It's the protocol's fault that opportune battle. That the opportune battle is such an issue. In an ideal world, the concept of abuse would not even exist. Fees would be mandatory and carefully structured to closely match the actual cost that a given transaction imposes on the network. If you pay the fees for what you're doing, then you should be able to do it. No questions asked." So Vitalik has quite a bit in common with people who think the Bitcoin blockchain today should just function function as uh, using the fee filter. On March 27, 2014, Counterparty changed the way that it made transactions to get around Luke's mining filter. However, the following day, Luke commented that, quote, great news, filter added to block this crap in less than five minutes and one line of code. It looks like these filters were working back then. Luke, Luke also likened Counterparty to a form of abuse. It's abuse because you're forcing others to download, store your data against their free choice. Every full node must download the full blockchain, prunable or not. Every full node has consented to download and store financial transactions. Not every full node has consented to store anything else. You need 100% consensus for this. And if we go back, we can see some tweets that from a few years later that discuss this. I think this is pretty interesting to see. We start with Roger Ver here, the scammer, calling Vitalik both a genius and a class act and saying that's why Vit that's why Roger Ver sold a portion of his Bitcoin for Ethereum in addition to lots of Bitcoin cash. And it's fascinating to see, to see here the relative market caps. This was after Bcash forked from Bitcoin. Bitcoin with a market cap of 99 billion. Bcash with a market cap of only 29.30 billion, but they're still fairly close at that point. Jihan Wu responds, I also heard that ETH idea should have been done on top of Bitcoin. Some arrogant people drive him out. Is that true? And here's Vitalik answering Jihan's question. The very earliest versions of ETH protocol were a counterparty style Metacoin on top of Primecoin. There's that counterparty idea again. Not Bitcoin because the op return wars were happening at the time. And given what certain core devs, what certain Bitcoin core devs were saying at the time, I was scared that protocol rules would change under me, for example, by banning certain ways to encode data and transactions to make it harder. And I did not want to build on a base protocol whose dev team would be 
at war with me. This is something that the current Bitcoin Core team should learn from, that people do listen and pay attention to how difficult you make it to spam the chain. Vitalik goes on to write, an upper turn did end up getting censored down to 40 bytes. So I think it's fair to say that this willingness to compromise protocol immutability to achieve a desired outcome in a particular application, hmm, sound familiar, made ETH on Bitcoin even then a non-starter. And he talks about this as well. And this thread begins with Vinnie Lingam. This is actually true if you're an OG Bitcoin maximalist. Bitcoin was supposed to be the one ring to rule them all. Even Vitalik Buterin tried to build Ethereum on top of Bitcoin, but was denied. Adam Back responds, don't believe he was quote unquote denied. I was talking with him before. Initially, he was thinking Bitcoin, then Primecoin, Metacoin, then realized he could make more money launching his own coin. Less FUD, please. I'm not a fan of altcoins but things should live on their own merit, not FUD. And then Vitalik responds to Adam saying, in response to his Adam saying, don't believe he was denied. Vitalik writes, why Primecoin and not Bitcoin? Bitcoin had opportune wars happening at that time. With Primecoin, I thought they could benefit greatly from Ethereum being on their platform and so would not have incentive to censor it. And then he goes on to say, I do agree that, quote, Greg Maxwell literally threw me out the door and made me wait for my Uber standing in the rain is a misrepresentation, though it's a pretty funny phrase. In conclusion, when Bitcoin core devs in the Bitcoin community showed a hostility to spammy projects being built on top of Bitcoin, it actually drove the spammers and the scammers like Vitalik away. And that's one reason why having a sane mempool policy is so important. It sends a message to the wider crypto community that Bitcoin is not a friendly place to build your scams on. This community, this Bitcoin community hostility drove Vitalik away in 2014 and 2015. But that was then and now is now. And today it's a completely different world. Bitcoin core devs are happy to make changes to accommodate any startup they want, like crypto startups like Citria. Bitcoin core devs say that they hate spam, but they've done absolutely nothing to fix the inscriptions exploit. And they're now blowing open the opportune filter recklessly raising it in one fell swoop from 80 bytes to 100,000 100, bytes as we've been talking about on this channel. So this really ain't your mama's Bitcoin core. Today, I think there's actually a good alignment of values between many 2025 Bitcoin core devs and their supporters and Vitalik Buterin finally. As Bitcoin core devs who are anti-spam begin to abandon the sinking ship, that is Bitcoin Core, I would personally like to see Vitalik nominated to fill the void. And for this reason, I'm prepared to write a letter of recommendation for Vitalik if he asked me to. I think he's an outstanding candidate and could really help the current core team transform the current network from Bitcoin into something more like Ethereum. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.